So let's begin with our uh, simple small project of making a colorful beautiful butterfly. Let's start by drawing the butterfly. Make a sketch of the butterfly and make sure it should be a light shade because that's the first tip which we give when people will work with watercolor always draw light because watercolor is a transparent medium and whatever is there behind it will be visible clearly if the color is light. Uh, so here we have the stencil also ready in the session if you want to download it and trace it you can do that otherwise any other uh, butterfly pattern also you can make doesn't matter because the things which we want to show you here is the detailing part and the step by step process how to go forward with these kind of paintings so let's begin with the painting of this butterfly So we'll just go like wing by wing and uh, always try to follow the process of painting from top to bottom so it will give you an ease to work with you don't have to worry about your hand you're keeping it on the paper so let's begin with the first wing which is on the top and uh, you can use random shades just imagine uh, the different colors and paint it or if you want to refer some picture and you want to copy that picture that's also fine here our focus is just to see the steps so here I'm starting with the wing one and starting with the light blue shade uh, wherever it is needed. Try to uh, follow the pattern of uh, going from light to dark. That is always easy to edit later if we want to do it. So I apply all the lighter shades first of all and then we'll move forward for the uh, next step of painting. Here you can see how the layering works for us. Uh, the same color if you are applying somewhere let it dry and again apply the second layer of the same color you will see the difference. So that is what layering is. Same color applying at the different point of time will give you a different feel. Once we are done with the light blue, let's go to the little darker version of the blue to give the outline and the definite shape to the wing.
So here you are seeing we are using just the blue color but still it is giving the shape and the different like uh, the folds and all those things on the wing. So the tip is always try to go for the layering technique and use different shades and hues of the same color at different point of time. Now after blue, I just want to give the little tinge of chrome yellow uh, in between the wings randomly. That also depends, uh, the effect also depends like how wet the color is. If the color is wet and if you are applying yellow on top of it, uh, number one, it will smudge nicely and uh, it won't give you the sharp edges. So it will blend very smoothly and it will give you the natural effect. Yeah, so along with the advantage, it has the disadvantage also if the color is wet and you are using yellow and blue together, it will make the color green. So those things you have to keep in mind, how you want to apply the colors, which color you want, where layering is used, where the wet color is required, where the completely dry color is required. So this is the, basically the purpose of doing these projects. So what we did for the first wing, let's move to the second wing. And if you move step by step, it will be clear for you also that how the contrast is coming, how things are looking nice to each other. Uh, don't like jump from one place to another. Go sequentially, go top to bottom. That's the best practice to work on. Always start your work with the different sizes of brushes because this is kind of a detailed work. So we will be needing all size of brushes from like double zero, zero, one, and two, and uh, try to take the finer brush for getting the precision and for getting the like detailed, neat, and clean work. Now on the wings, if you see, I'm keeping the place white at some places. So uh, this is basically the use where you can use your masking fluid to protect the color to go onto the paper. So just apply the masking fluid somewhere as a dots on the wings and remove it later. So it will also give you the almost the same effect. So here I am just giving the pink shade uh, instead of yellow just to make it more colorful and beautiful. Just apply color randomly, don't think too much. Just take care of the contrast and uh, the proper sheen of the background, I mean the wherever the, you want the wet or dry that you have to take care.
uh, we are done with the second wing also let's move to the third one this is basically the two layers of coloring is already done uh, at the end we will just go for the final uh, touch up the dark shades or uh, the lines or the edges all those things will do it at the end so this is what our base is getting ready first It's taking the shape slowly so take your time go slow enjoy the process enjoy the painting that's the main aim of doing the creative work don't rush to finish the work fast especially with the watercolor because more and more layering you will do the more and more depth will come in the picture
so we are almost done with our first or second uh, layer of coloring now let's go for the second coat and uh, make the things little bit darker the one property of watercolor is like after some time if you see the color will become little dull so that is also one of the reason we'll go for the glazing or the layering so now let's go for the uh, third layer we'll just put one more shade darker wherever it is needed
the last layer of darkening is very important because that is what which is giving the perspective to our 2D image. The only key to convert your 2D picture into a 3D or looks like 3D, go for different different shades and tones of a color. That is the only thing which you have to take care. So as you go from very light to dark, dark and dark, it will add up the depth in your picture and will just make your picture more realistic. We are almost done with the wings. Let's move to the body. Uh, body is having basically the black and white color. So just leave few spaces white. Make an eye properly because uh, that will make the thing realistic. And uh, color the remaining body. the body and just doing the legs randomly uh, put the little color on the legs and just make the hairy uh, texture with the pen or a very fine brush
just to give a finishing touch and just making a random flower below the butterfly uh, you can just leave it just like that it's looking fine uh, you can give a little background also if you want to but our butterfly is already very bright and multicolor so you can leave the paper white that will like pop up more if you leave it with the white background At the end, uh, just give the final touches, a uh, little the neatness or the smoothness on the edges if needed. You can use uh, different mediums also to give the finishing touches like uh, colored pen or color pencil. But make sure it should not look really odd, it should blend properly with the watercolor. So initially just go with pure watercolor to finish your painting and later once you are like uh, maybe uh, you have the knowledge of all the mediums, how to use it properly, how to blend them properly, then you can go for the mixed media paintings.
we are almost done with the painting and uh, I'm just giving the bright border to the flower. Uh, one more important thing, like we should know where to stop. That is very important decision in the painting. Like if you will like, keep doing something end of the day, maybe you will spoil the originality and the freshness of the painting. So just decide by yourself. Okay, this is the final thing and here I'm going to stop coloring because it's very, the colors will give you the temptation to do it more and more. But just decide the end point of the painting. Okay, so we are done with our beautiful multicolor butterfly. Uh, keep trying. Uh, observe some more beautiful creatures or the objects which are having this kind of pattern, the multicolor and a bit of detailing. And uh, practice on that. <laughs>